Where do you crop for the most flattering portraits? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing three cropping tips for stronger compositions using Lightroom. This video is inspired off of some of the biggest mistakes I've seen when reviewing photographer portfolios. Oftentimes photographers don't even know that they're making these common mistakes, yet the great news is it can a lot of times be fixed with the simple re-edit. So in addition to this video being great for all future edits that you do, I also encourage you after watching it to go back through your existing portfolio with fresh eyes and look for areas that you can re-edit you may be surprised at how impactful a simple recrop can be. You're also gonna to wanna to sit to the end for a special bonus tip utilizing both cropping and posing to flatter your clients in a way that's going to have them singing your praises and referring you to all their friends. All right, let's dig in. Number one, avoid cropping a joints. As a general rule of thumb, when photographing people, we want to avoid cropping anywhere where they have a joint. This includes hips, knees, ankles, elbows, wrists, and knuckles. When cropping in these areas, it can create a sort of uncomfortable tension in the photo that will steal away from the main focus or feeling that we're wanting to convey. As an example, here's a photo from an engagement shoot I recently shot, and a common mistake I'll see is cropping right at the feet or right at those ankles. And a lot of times this happens because maybe we shot the image a little bit crooked and we didn't leave ourselves enough room below the feet. So when we went to adjust, it actually cropped into the feet when we straightened out that horizon line. And if this has happened to you before, no worries at all, it's totally common. Just make a mental note to give yourself more room in the future. But for fixing it in post, what you can do is actually just crop a little bit tighter. So that way the crop looks more intentional and less like a mistake you made not giving yourself enough room. The next area you wanna look at is avoiding those knees. So you can see in the next image, I came even tighter, a little bit above the knee at that thigh. And the next area we wanna avoid for this pose would be those knuckles and that wrist. So you can see in my next image, I come even tighter, cropping above that wrist. Another thing you can do is switch up the pose a little bit, maybe have it cross his arms, but these are things that you'll wanna look out for when cropping at different points in the body that kind of flow from more full body to a tighter crop while creating a pleasing portrait that brings all the attention right to him. Number two is to give your images breathing room. Breathing room is the space or margin between your subject and the edge of the image. And a common mistake I see is not having enough margin. So coming back into Lightroom, here's another image of my sweet couple. And as you can see, there is nice breathing room between their bodies and the edges of the image. But a mistake I'll often see is crops that are more like this where it's right up against the edge of the frame. And the problem with this is it creates this sort of visual tension, which is drawing our eyes away from their faces and towards that left side of the, of the image. So it's, it's drawing our eyes away from our intended purpose of the image. And in order to fix this, we either want to bring that back out to add some margin, or if we don't have room, just it wasn't shot that way, then what we would do is crop in tighter to make it look more intentional. And we would just take out that margin altogether. But when it's right up against the edge, it just looks awkward. The other area that we wanna look out for is breathing room around the head. So if we were to have it cropped like this, it would look really awkward because it's riding right up against his head, which brings our eyes upward rather than to their faces. So typically we want to have even just only a tiny, tiny bit of breathing like room looks kind of weird sometimes. So you want to have a little bit of space around them to make it look more intentional and it just gives a more pleasing look to the image. But say you did have a crop where it was right up against his head or even cropping in just a little bit where it was kind of awkward. Then again, we still have the option to crop in even tighter to make it more intentional. And in this case, I would actually crop in um, both up on the top and in the bottom to make it look very intentional and a more intimate crop. So for something like this, another thing we'll wanna pay attention to is again, those fingertips so that we're not cropping at the joints. So we'll come in and we have to be even more intentional when doing these tighter crops. I like to see a little bit of the other side of her arm uh, and that looks really nice for like a more intimate crop where there's actually no breathing room. But this is a good thing to keep in mind is that breathing room and margin in your images 
and how you can use it to change the feeling of a photo. This actually leads perfectly into our next tip. But first, if you're new around here and you enjoy videos like this, consider tapping that subscribe button to stay in the loop for future videos dedicated to helping you amp your craft and build your own fun, vibrant, and wildly profitable photography empire. Number three, use rule of thirds to add interest and impact. This is something that I'll often do in camera while framing up my image. But a lot of times, if you're unsure of where to crop when you're adjusting your image in post, you can lean on these classic compositional techniques to add more impact in your images. And Adobe even has a cool tool to help with this. So first you have to be on the crop tool, but then you can press O on your keyboard and it brings up these compositional guides and you can cycle through them by continuing to press O. And we'll go ahead and come back to the rule of thirds guide. And the way rule of thirds works is it essentially cuts the image into three, into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And kind of the magic spot is the intersections between the lines. So we can either use the lines themselves, say if you have a horizon line, rather than centering it, you can bring it along one of these lines, or you can use the intersections to create really powerful compositions. And I find that I naturally shoot this way. A lot of times I will just naturally use rule of thirds in my images shooting in camera. But if you didn't naturally capture that way in camera, another thing that you can do to create those dynamic images and take advantage of rule of thirds in your images is to crop that way after the fact in post. Say I were to crop in a little bit tighter to just bring it in a little bit closer to her face. So that's wonderful. We're cropping right as far as like where the joints go, but what I begin to notice here is there's a lot of headroom. There's a lot of almost too much margin where it's beginning to draw our eye upward rather than bringing it inward to her face. And the reason for this is if we come over to our tool, this line is a little bit high on her head. So we're either gonna wanna bring that in to bring that line a little bit closer to her eyes, taking advantage of rule of thirds, and right there, like that creates a much more powerful portrait, which just brings all of the attention right into her face. So you can begin to see how powerful this tool is, even with how simple it is. So if we come over to one more image here, this is more of a, a zoomed out portrait. And you can really quickly see by using this cropping tool, we can really determine a lot about our image. So we can decide where we want the couple to be in our image. And as you can see, my final image, I did take advantage of the rule of thirds and have them right on that intersection point. Now there is other compositional tools that are equally as powerful. There's a lot of different tools that you have in your arsenal here. You can see I have a center weighted composition where I'm taking advantage of symmetry. This is another thing that I commonly will do in my images. And if you're interested in more of a full deep dive, talking all about compositional techniques, editing techniques, and a full A to Z shooting and editing program, uh, you might also be interested in my shoot to edit course, and I'll drop a link in the description to check out after this. And finally, I have one last bonus tip, and that's to intentionally use tapering to flatter your subjects. We can do this by cropping where the body naturally tapers or where the clothing tapers in the image. For example, women tend to be widest right around their hips. So if we were to crop a little bit lower as the body's naturally tapering, it's going to make them appear slimmer. Or if we crop a little bit past the bottom of the dress, that tends to a lot of times give a more feminine slimming appearance as well. You can also achieve this through posing. And a lot of times when using tapering, I like to combine both cropping and posing to give a really flattering look to my images. As an example, if I have a couple walking towards me in my images, which I love using movement in my images, many times I'll direct them to walk one foot in front of the other. And what this does is it will naturally taper that body, giving a little bit more of an hourglass look. And then if you're cropping in a little bit tighter in those poses, I'll very intentionally crop using both that pose and the crop to taper the body, giving a nice flattering look. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also love these videos here, so definitely check those out. And be sure to subscribe for more videos in my Edit Together Tuesday series. 
And also drop me a comment. Let me know which was your favorite tip, avoiding joins, adding breathing room, rule of thirds, or tapering the body. Let me know and I will catch you in the next video.